had a really good day of practice yesterday. Uh, had a day off after the game, which I thought was as important as anything. A lot, our guy, a lot of our guys are taking finals both this week and next week. A uh, heavy academic week with the fall semester ending. We had reading day yesterday. Finals started today, go through next Friday. So we uh, tend to go a little bit shorter with practice, be a little bit more concise. Thought that was good for the guys yesterday mentally. Uh, we had some guys with some exams today, and I'll have a bunch of them here early this next week. Um, thought we got a lot out of practice yesterday, even though it was short. And I thought we had great energy. Guys were very uh, enthusiastic, very engaged, uh, you know, working at this point uh, to continue to try to limit mistakes on both sides of the ball, making sure that uh, we're all on the same page. I love the accountability that the guys are showing right now and how they're coaching each other. Got much more certainly of a player-led team than what we had last year. Those things are all good. And, um, you know, the exciting thing for us, I think, as a staff, as we, we just came out of a staff meeting, was that we haven't come close to reaching our ceiling yet. And I really believe we got a lot of room for growth as we continue to clean some of these things up. You know, obviously, tomorrow's uh, opponent, terrific challenge, especially on the defensive end. They score over 100 points uh, like they breathe air uh, in, in, in certain games. The two guards, one of them had over 30. Rayson Keen had over 40 the other night. Sure, some of you guys probably saw the highlights on Sports Center. Uh, they're very, very explosive. Obviously, they shoot 35 plus three-point attempts a game, uh, which is which is unique. Uh, play a very fast tempo, uh, and then they've got shooters uh, around the two guards. And then I really like uh, you know Williams and Scott and Meyer, those guys that play uh, some five for them around those shooters and the two guards. Really play their role well play with a lot of energy. Uh, I, I, like, I like their team. You know, I think they've got a really good team. And anytime you've got two guards that are capable of getting those type of numbers night in, night out, you know, you know it's going to be a really tough cover. Questions? John, what did you learn from the Keon Johnson experience that can help with this game? Yeah, well, I hope they don't bank any in first would be the, the <laughs> you know, but you can't control that. Uh, sometimes but you know we, we played some really good offensive guards Jeremy here so far just the way the kind of the schedules laid out and who we played so I'm hoping that that experience helps us uh, obviously Keon Johnson's one of them you know I thought we did a good job the other night on Combs you know we, we've played some really really good whether it's Jaquan Lewis from BCU Dennis Smith like we we played some really really I thought West Virginia's guards were good Ray Tam Mays was good so we played against some really, really good guards. Obviously, these two are very, very good. You know, Rayson returns as a first-team all-league guy from last year. Keen was sitting out and is just is the nation's leading scorer, 31 plus points per game. What is amazing about him is usually when you see a guy average that many points per game, sometimes they're not as efficient. But you look at his two-point percentage, which is above 50. His three-point percentage is above 40. You know, he makes free throws. He's very, very efficient getting the 31-plus points per game, which is, you know, pretty, pretty admirable. You know, watching him is, you know, on, on film, you either get caught up uh, watching him and saying, wow, you know, this is you, – you get excited about watching him or, or you start to get a pit in your stomach, you know, one way or the other when you remind yourself you're, you know, guarding him uh, tomorrow at 2 o'clock. So, terrific, terrific talent. But we've played some good guards, and hopefully that experience will help us moving forward. About a good practice. How much has the way the team has practiced this year uh, translated into how they played in games? What have you seen? I think more often than not, I said that the other day. You know, every once in a while you have outliers. You know, I call it skipping steps, where you might skip a step in a certain day and get away with it. But I think in general, um, you know, my my old high school coach used to say, "Perfect practice makes perfect." And you know, I've had uh, another coach, I think it was one of the Van Gundys, talk about practice as permanent. You know, trying to get them to understand we're building championship habits. I want, I want, we want excellence. Um, you know, and, I, and we talked yesterday as a group, in our, you know, even in our senior meeting. Though if you have that mindset and you have self-discipline and you understand that every day matters and that you're bringing it every day and that excellence is what we're about, then that starts to translate to other areas of your life, which is what, you know, we want. That's what we want this whole experience uh, to be about for our players. Uh, the athletic part as well as the off-the-court part and how those things correlate. So yesterday I, I really saw uh, the guys 
really holding each other accountable even more. They've already done that a lot. But I think they, you know, we, we saw some clips on the film and I could hear them talking about different things that were happening out there and how they got to get that cleaned up. And anytime you got the players talking that way, that's a, that's a really, really good thing because the more ownership they have, the better. Well, I think our bench wasn't great the other day, Jeremy. It was just okay. And and uh, here within the last couple of weeks, they'd had some really good performances. So they'll be better. I, we need more consistency. And, um, you know, I'm hoping one or more of those guys start to emerge in practice and in games is what you want. Um, but right now, you know, with the, in particular, you know, when you look at the minutes per game, our seventh, eighth, and ninth highest minutes per game guys have fluctuated. You know, I'd like for it to be probably a little bit more solidified, but sometimes you don't have a team like that. Sometimes you have a guy the, – the way I could probably best describe it would be uh, – because we just all got done watching the World Series. Uh, I know Lauren was thrilled watching it. Um, is they bring in right-handers, right, to go against right-handers. Lefties to go against lefties. It's basketball, pressing teams, this guy. Another team, maybe this guy. More length. Are they pressing tonight? Are they packed in? It's no different than having middle relievers and closers, you know. And we, you hope that somebody emerges and clearly disengages themselves from the group. And if that happens, players play players. But if not, then, you know, we're trying to use those guys to the best of our ability for the team's sake and what's best for the team. And I, and I really believe some of those guys have started to buy into, which is great. I mentioned that a couple of weeks ago, the whole concept of strength in numbers. It takes a sacrificial spirit and one of, you know, hey, it's team, 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 team. We're starting to see more of that, and that's, that's a good thing. Um, a lot, a lot of things. Obviously, I mentioned we had a lot of different meetings that week. We tweaked a couple things X and O wise, but it was more mindset, I think, than anything else. Um, the X and O tweaks did help a little bit. We've taken better care of the ball. The other night, I wasn't thrilled with 15 of them. I thought we should have played with about 10 or 11. You know, we had some sloppy ones that we got to continue to get cleaned up. You know, the other night we were really good offensively, other than the times we turned it. We just had too many. We've got to we got to sure that up. I think that's gotten better. We nationally, from a statistical standpoint, that turnover percentage has continued to improve, and that's a good thing. Uh, I think our offensive rebounding has improved dramatically. You know, obviously the addition of Black certainly helps you with rebounding, but some other guys have done a good job there as well. I think our execution of what we're doing offensively has gotten better. I think our guys' knowledge and our habits have gotten a little bit better defensively. You know, are they where they need to be right now in totality? No. we we, we got to get some of those things cleaned up. But we're certainly much improved from where we were a couple weeks ago. DJ playing well off the bench uh, Tuesday. What do you maybe see that he needs to you know, improve on to be more consistent like you want? Yeah, well, obviously he made a couple shots. And, uh, and I'm glad he did. Thank goodness, right? We needed every basket the other night. But I think sometimes uh, from where you're sitting – and other people might look at it as he made a couple shots, he played well. There's more than making shots to the game, okay? Now, he did play well the other day. He did. He did some good things. I thought he, he got in the passing lanes with his length. His positioning was better. See, I'm looking at all those things, not just the fact that he threw in two out of three field goals, you know, which I'm glad he did. Had he not, I mean, you know, we needed him, and I'm glad he did. And I hope he continues to shoot that percentage. He's more than capable. But there's a lot to this, uh, you know, positioning defensively, grayed out defensively, uh, you know, how he defends with certain lineups and groups, and not just him, with other guys that I get questions asked about too. It's more than just shot making. You know, there's other aspects of the game that certainly every team needs to play well and uh, that we look at when evaluating our team or just evaluating a player uh, solely based on whether they make shots or not I think can be a little bit of a misnomer. Just follow up to that. Yeah, he took two out of three games. How do you feel like maybe he's handled that when you talk about you know, sacrifice? Well, obviously he handled it well the other day. He was ready to go, and he got in, and he played well. Uh, per minute played, I thought he was really productive, and he had a good practice yesterday, and piggybacked off of that. So, 
you know, I, I like the direction that he's that he's headed right now. Um, you know, obviously a lot of it's mental and, and in terms of a, d making a decision, each guy making a decision that this is going to be my disposition every day. It's how hard I'm going to play. It's how locked in I'm going to be. You know, we're going to continue to coach them up. Um, but, you know, I always say players play players, and I really do believe that. I know you probably don't like to overhype sort of personal achievement, but based on the season and career Malcolm might have had by the time he's done here, uh, do you ever take any time to sort of encourage your guys, encourage him to enjoy the moment, enjoy sort of the talent they're playing with uh, in terms of what he's done as a body of work? Not right now. Um, you know, obviously we talked yesterday. We, this should be fun. When you compete with toughness and you compete as a group, my gosh, I mean, I, I wish I could go back and be an athlete. I loved it. I mean, there's nothing like it. You know, so that's what's fun is competing with some toughness and mental toughness and physical toughness and energy and playing the game the right way and being together. Man, there's, you know, there's very, you know, few things in life more enjoyable. It's just, it's terrific. And whenever we can capture that, I thought we did last weekend. I thought we played our butts off, you know, uh, and uh, really fought. That was, that's fun. That's what's fun about it is doing that together uh, and competing with that type of toughness and togetherness. That part I do, I, I do want them to enjoy because you only get to do this one time. You get one time to do it and, uh, for those guys, and, and uh, I do want them to enjoy that. But in terms of individual accolades and all that, we certainly recognize it, and a lot of the guys, you know, we had, you know, Malcolm's gotten off to a great start. You know, today we'll announce that Leron Black was the Scholar Athlete of the Week on campus to the team, and we'll all clap it up for Leron and give him a big hug. And, you know, so we certainly recognize, you know, those things. But at the end of the day, I think, especially with an older group, our guys are locked in on more team things right now. Certainly the individual accolades, we can maybe admire those a little bit more at the end. Follow up on Malcolm, John. He He's improved every year, and you can see it each year. And, and he's doing things now that I don't think he could have maybe done a year ago. Could you just talk about this progression from junior to senior? Because he looks like a guy that's really intent on going out in style. Yeah, well, if you – you know, Jamal played for Charlie Spoonhour, used to coach at St. Louis. And Jamal's always been big. He'll, he'll say to me, if you have character plus work ethic, that was kind of Spoon's deal, then you're going to get better. And that's him. His work ethic is abnormal. It's different. You know, it's ridiculous. You know, he, he's in the gym 6.30 in the morning in season getting shots up. Sometimes I don't even want him in there. I want to get him out of there, you know, to get him freshened up. He just, he's, he's a workhorse. He, he's earned everything, he, everything that's happening for him, he's, he earns it. And then you add the fact the type of person he is, the type of character. So you add that character to that work ethic and, and, uh, and then the staff does a good job with him. And, you know, he spends a lot of time lifting, watching film, shooting, changing his body, changing his, athlete, you know, his athleticism. He's become more athletic. Um, you know, he takes care of his body. You'll see him in cold tubs after practice, even when it's not mandatory that day to do that or compression boots. He does it anyway. Just, he just has a pro's pro mindset right now. And I, there's no doubt about it, Tup. I think every year he's been here, he's improved in some area or multiple areas. And, um, you know, certainly he, he, his work ethic, his character, I mean, he deserves you know, a lot of credit uh, for that. But he's at a point right now, and, and he referenced him here a minute ago, where he's much – he was on guys yesterday for making some defensive mistakes in a couple drills. And then when he made a mistake, he said, hey, that's on me. Like, he, he's, he's more into the team stuff right now. Um, He's done a lot individually. You know, he, he's much more into the team uh, uh, right now. Not that he hadn't been in the past, but I think at an even higher level now, Tup. John, it's a week away, but Kipper is going to be eligible after this. And how, how does he kind of factor into what you have? Well, obviously, another good player, great kid. Brings a little bit different dimension with his ability to guard the ball. Uh, has a real physical body. Uh, what I what I call when he arrived as a college made or ready body, you know. So we'll, we'll we'll see how all that works out. Obviously, you know, practice will determine that. How we're playing, how other guys are playing, will determine you know how he's used in the rotation initially. LeBron's uh, appreciative attitude and maturity, but his improvement on the basketball court is pretty noticeable too, isn't it? Over the last couple no years. question, you know, and really, 
you know, he's, he's made the, pro, uh, the progressive changes to get better, a little bit like Hill has that Tup was referencing Malcolm. It's just you guys didn't get a seam last year. You know, not everybody traveled with us to France. But he was, I mean, he had three double-doubles. I thought he was on the verge of becoming our guy that maybe improved the most in between his first and second year, and then he just ran into some, the injury bug a little bit. So he made a lot of progress then, and now he took another jump. Um, he's really worked hard. He's, he's a, a, a lot like Malcolm. He's in a lot on his own. He, he pours a lot into it. He cares a lot about his team. And, uh, but, I, again, I think the mental is so powerful. And uh, for him right now, I think mentally, his, his gracious attitude for everything because of everything that he's been through is probably as much of a trigger as anything, Jim, to be honest with you, for the accelerated improvement uh, that we've seen. A lot of this is so mental. It's such a mindset. And, uh, you know, most, most days he has the mindset that you would want a guy to have, and th therefore he's improved a great deal. You know, obviously, we like to play fast. Um, you know, I think you got to find that balance. It's a great question because we don't want to be baited into long, quick shots. Um, certain guys, maybe, you know, we want to play how within the roles that certain guys have. But you're right. I think that's certainly a temptation, you know. So we want to be calculating for sure. We want to make sure that we're playing with purpose. We're not going to ask our good shooters to pass up open shots we just got to make sure that we're open and that we have a real purpose on every offensive possession LaRon's jump shot's been a weapon for him where are you on LaRon the three-point shooting jump shot? I'm letting him shoot him he's worked really hard he's made him in practice you know it's just a matter of I think one or two of them falling through for him in a game but you know he doesn't necessarily hunt him tough but you know you saw the other day we opened the game and they tagged on a pick and roll and he was wide open there wasn't anybody within 10 feet of him and he stepped right into it and hit back iron and could have very easily went in i, I feel very comfortable you know he's shooting about one or two a game and I, I believe it's only a matter of time before he starts making them hey back to marcus keen for a minute I mean, obviously he's skilled but is it different playing against a guy like a skilled guy like that when he's playing with like an extreme level of confidence because based on those highlights you talked about his is sky high. I think. No question. You know, obviously, has tremendous freedom in the way that they play. They shoot the ball quickly, early in possessions. You know, they're 31st in tempo, which is you know possession number on Ken Palm. So they're shooting it quick, and he has he has the ultimate green light. Both he and Racing, and you know, obviously, they're really utilizing the three point line. They have great spacing. Um, they're really, really good offensively. Defending the ball screen and the pick and pop was a problem in the last game. This is a team that likes to use that action with Keen. How big of a focus that has that been in cleaning that? Yeah, up? I mean, obviously they, they did that uh, in the last game. Brennan made a big one late, uh, and then we changed a little bit our coverage. But, you know, more than anything, I, I didn't think necessarily the other night was pick and pop threes that hurt us. I thought it was recognition of who you're closing out to, how long you need to close out. We dared a couple guys to shoot when that was their strength, and that's uh, we can't do that, you know. Um, but, you know, they've got – there's no question about it. They can put lineups out there, Derek, that where five guys shoot threes. So as much as they do pick and roll with Keen and Rayson, you know, you have to have an awareness of, you know, of, of them in those situations. Not yet. He's seen the, you know, seeing the doctor today. We should know more here. I'm hoping by this afternoon, by the latest, I'm hoping tomorrow. I have, I have. Bye.